Did you know that you can use outboard effects such as analog compressors, delays or reverbs in Ableton Live as if they were a plugin? Well, this time I'm gonna show you how you can accomplish this with native Ableton plugins and RME audio interfaces. But before we continue, please make sure that you've subscribed to our channel to get notified whenever we upload a new video. For this demo, we are going to use the UCX2 and the Illusia Impressa 500. In two previous videos, we've already shown how analog hardware can be used as an insert or send effect in Total Mix FX. Since we are going to apply this same technique in this tutorial, I strongly recommend you to watch the other videos as well. This will give you a profound understanding of signal routing in Total Mix FX. The links are in the description box below. All right. Let's head over to Total Mix FX and Ableton Live. In Ableton Live, head over to the browser on the left-hand side. Select the Audio Effects category and choose the External Audio Effect from the list. Simply drag the External Audio Effect to your desired audio or MIDI track. Let's focus shortly now on hardware routing. Outputs 3 and 4 of the Fireface UCX2 are connected to the inputs of the Illusia Impressor 500, sending the audio signal out of the computer into the analog compressor. To get the processed signal back into the computer, the outputs of the Illusia Impressor 500 are connected to inputs 5 and 6 of the Fireface UCX2. So far, so good. The external audio effect by itself is quite straightforward. It features an Audio To and an Audio From section. Under Audio To, we select the two output channels from the Fireface UCX2 that go straight into the input of the Illusia Impressa 500 modules. As previously mentioned, these are outputs 3 and 4. Now we need to get the processed return signal from the Impressa 500 back into Ableton Live. For this, we go to Audio From and select the input channels of the Fireface UCX2, which are connected to the output of the Illusia Impressa 500. In this case, inputs 5 and 6. Individual gain controls for adjusting digital input and output levels respectively are located next to the I.O. section. This will help you to avoid clipping at any stage of the signal flow. Furthermore, Peak level indicators below each chooser show the highest level attained and will turn red once the signal starts to clip. If you are unfamiliar with digital and analog level matching and you want to know how you can avoid clipping, watch our dedicated video. Since most analog hardware effects introduce latency that Ableton Live cannot automatically detect, you have to manually compensate for any delays by adjusting the hardware latency slider. The latency compensation can be set either in milliseconds or samples. Especially in combination with a dry-wet control, latency compensation can be crucial in order to avoid phasing when mixing dry and wet audio signals. Let me play around with the latency offset so that you understand this phenomenon. As a side note, the loops used for this tutorial are from our free Breaks and Beats drum sample pack. Go check it out on the RME website and download it for free. The link is in the description below. When used on a single MIDI or audio track, the Impressor 500 becomes a traditional insert effect, thus only affecting one channel. But we could also drag the created preset over to a return channel in Ableton Live and send different signals to the Impressor 500 via the send controls. Once you are satisfied with your settings, you can save everything as a preset.
Great, we successfully set up Ableton's external audio effect with a Fireface UCX2. Let's jump to Total Mix Effects. Because most of the audio routing takes place in Ableton Live, the setup process in Total Mix Effects is very straightforward. First, go to outputs 3 and 4 and make sure that only software playback channels 3 and 4 are routed to that particular submix. Remember, we selected outputs 3 and 4 in the external audio effect. Hence, Ableton Live sends the audio signal to software playback channels 3 and 4. For more information on signal routing in Total Mix Effects, go check out our Beginner's Guide video series. In order to ensure that no other signal is routed to outputs 3 and 4, it is advisable to clear the submix 3 and 4 beforehand. With a right mouse click on output 3 and 4, we open up the channel option menu, where we can clear the submix. This will delete all routings for that particular submix. As Total Mix Effects includes an unlimited undo, the delete process can be undone without any problem. Now we just route software playback channels 3 and 4 to submix 3 and 4. As last step, make sure that neither software playback channels 3 and 4 nor input channels 5 and 6 are routed to your headphones or speakers. By default, Ableton Live's main output is routed to software playback channels 1 and 2. Therefore, having the send and return signals from the Empressa 500 on your monitors or headphones is not needed. Alright, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, write them down in the comment section below and I see you in the next video.